is it possible to envisage a scenario where the developed world gradually drifts into a depression like scenario i know we don't like to use the word depression so in whatever you know uh, sensitized version of that word but uh, the the global uh, you know that developed world gradually drifts into that kind of a scenario and we have a secular bull market in india so is it possible for both of these to coexist or are we saying that look for our secular bull market to be there the world better not get into a depression scenario otherwise that will impact our bull case okay uh, i see uh, complacency around me uh, whenever i look at the markets there's a there's a central bank put you've been hearing the word central bank a lot many times over here there's a central bank put everywhere so any uh, crisis which comes in people expect that a central bank will jump in and it will not allow the markets to correct you just saw it in china a week back in fact yesterday they announced half trillion dollar of support for equity markets so that was unheard of but if any crisis comes where central bank support is found wanting at that point of time we will have a severe correction in the market mm. india to that extent will be coupled that our markets will also correct we don't stand on a different planet altogether but after that the dust has when the dust has settled in and the capital has still to be allocated at that point of time if i believe i stand i strongly believe india will be decoupled from the rest of the world money has still to be allocated after that dust has settled in and at that point of time you will find that india's fundamental at that point of time would be much much better than rest of the world whether you talk about positive real rates whether you talk about uh, our demographics whether you talk about a government doing the right thing by cutting the red tapes so at that point of time the capital will allocate and with capital will come to india so to summarize we will also fall like other markets but we will bounce back faster than other markets harsha you know we are, we are we are all born optimists and we like to see the markets going up rather than down um that said um i'd like you to uh, take us through two specific sectors in the indian market which are supposed to or that's widely expected will sort of lead the market but which have their own set of challenges so you have the financial and the infrastructure space and we heard prashant talking about how infrastructure you know is going to lead and and uh, government spending is going to lead the recovery so if you take financials you have um, in a nutshell you have the private sector banks that don't give you valuation comfort now you have the psu banks where you have everybody worrying about npas and you have the rbi governor coming in saying look don't get complacent you know the it's it's not yet sorted out uh, and that pretty much comprises the bulk of the financial space between the private sector and the psu banks um so what is the the growth engine for financials given this situation and and what's the comfort that you get with financials and part 2 is on the infrastructure side the market seems to be giving us a uh, a signal that there was this huge euphoria when the new government came in but then somewhere as, as far as the infrastructure stocks is concerned that euphoria has got tempered with a sense of realism um what's the story as far as the infrastructure sector is concerned um do we actually see that leading this bull market or do we see that merely being a market performer or could be even an underperformer yeah uh, i'll start with the financials yes i think uh, i mean you have laid out the whole scenario quite clearly there is valuation comfort on the psu segment whereas the fundamentals are not supporting at the same time you have a uh, high premium on the private sector side and uh, the growth is also much higher there so clearly from a today's market perspective you can't be alone uh, you can't be in one uh, particular basket alone you have to have a balance between private sector as well as public sector banks uh the case for public sector banks is very clear it's a beaten down valuations and at some point of time things will turn around and you will make money i'll dwell a little bit more on uh, private sector banks where our portfolios are uh, highly uh, skewed towards uh let's take the example of hdfc bank because you spoke about valuations sure uh in december 2000, uh, 2000 it was probably around 6000 crores in terms of market cap and by 2007 december it was almost 60000 crore plus so a 10 time jump in about 7 years after that everybody would have believed that probably given that growth rates are slackening in the overall system as well as in the banking scenario the stock should have underperformed but from there it has again given 4x returns so the issue is not so much about valuations but about whether that 
amount of growth that is required for that valuation to hold will continue to be there in the system. Mm. Uh, as far as private banks are concerned, I think clearly they have made the right strategic call to look at the retail assets long before everyone realized. Uh, for example, between 2000 and 2015, the number of branches that have been open in the Indian context, 30% uh, of that incremental branch network has come from private sector. Because if you have to attack uh, retail liabilities, you have to have either branch network or you have to have superior technology. I think uh, clearly on the technology side, private banks uh, score well. At the same time, they have also built up branch network. And what it has done to the SAR market is, today, uh, from a low of about 11% market share in the SAR uh, balances in the country, uh, the private sector banks today account for more than 20%. Mm -hmm. So clearly, they have been able to raise low-cost liabilities and also manage their retail assets much better compared to the previous cycle where most of the retail assets were unsecured. Today, most of them are secured and the credit costs are likely to be much lower. So given all this, we believe that while uh, there could be some hiccups in terms of growth going forward on the corporate side, which is clearly visible, I think that will be more than made up by the retail uh, book for at least the private sector banks. As far as uh, infrastructure is concerned, uh, I think Prashant also alluded to it that uh, initially it has to come from the public sp sector spend and not private sector capex. Compared to the previous cycle, clearly uh, there is a shift. Last cycle it was driven by power, oil and gas, telecom, roads, etc. This time while the roads will still contribute, power sector maybe in the transmission segment will contribute, uh, but not so much in the generation side. So that space is going to be taken up by railways, defense, the metro network, etc. So there is a shift. I think the corporate side of CapEx is going to lag for at least uh, foreseeable time. Yeah. And the initial uh, <clears throat> push has to come from the public sector spend. Prashant, can I ask you to, to step in on that, please? Um, financials, do you see financials outperforming, market performing, or underperforming? Outperform, I mean, from what Harsha said, he mentioned HDFC Bank went up 10 times. Yeah. No, 2000 to 2007, you will be surprised probably State Bank outperformed that in that time. <laughs> hmm. So State Bank's CAGR was 42 percent versus 31 percent, 34 percent of HDFC Bank. Hmm. So that, that happened just because State Bank is more of a corporate CAPEX-led bank or a CAPEX-led bank and HDFC Bank is more of a retail bank. Hmm. So, in a period when CAPEX is reviving, I think the corporate banks could actually do better in terms of both profit growth and uh, right. returns. Right, right. Because markets discount, I mean, what you are saying, what everyone is saying, is that asset quality is a problem. Yeah. And it is indeed a problem, but I believe it is probably discounted in the market sure. prices. And that's why you can go back and check in the last cycle what happened. They were the same banks. The outcome was very different. <laughs> okay. I think it will right. beat this type around. Mm. Narin, what, what are the sectors that you see leading this, this bull market in the next three years? Can you take the mic, please? I think it is very clear that uh, the sectors which have led from 2007 to 15, I think there's one set of sectors which have possibly doubled or quadrupled in this period. And uh, there is a set of sectors which have possibly gone nowhere between 2007 and 15. Now, if uh, I believe that you can't have uh, every cycle the same set of sectors doing well. Yeah. And uh, it rarely happens if you go and look at uh, over even India's history from 90s, there have been periods where technology has been the leading sector. TMT was the leading sector between 97 and 2000. Then 2002 to 7 was an entirely different set of companies. I believe that uh, this can't last, whether for another six more months the old sectors continue to do well, maybe. But uh, the aggregate, today the aggregate market cap, let's say of the metal sector, is lower than the market cap of a single pharma company or a single bank. And, uh, you know, these kind of things we have seen, like, for example, if you go back to 2007, DLF's market cap was higher than the market cap of the pharma sector. Hmm. And in 2000, Infosys and Wipro each 
were higher than the market cap of the software se- of the cement and steel sector right, right. so i believe that you can't have the same sectors leading the cycle mahesh just uh, you know continuing from the point that naren made which is that um, the sectors that have done very well between 2008 to 15 may not be necessarily the leaders for the next 5 years would that mean that you would be uh, looking at reducing exposure to healthcare and fmcg which have been the leaders in the last 5 years is that something that you would be consciously doing now yeah so i think uh, i would agree that i think the uh, the recovery in the broader market is the markets have to do well from here the participation from the other sectors especially the domestic cyclicals has to really uh, be there okay because you can't sustain on a few sectors okay uh, doing well uh, for many years so given that uh, yeah i mean going forward one would want to be uh, slightly overweight uh, in domestic cyclicals which will include uh, consumer discretionary uh, auto where that will include that and also uh, banks because they will also be a proxy to the broad economic recovery